Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So I hope you have heard about antinatalism. If you haven't, then you are in for a surprise. David Benetter, the head of the Department of Bioethics in the University of Cape Town, wrote a book called Never to Have Been Born, bringing the idea of antinatalism into the modern world. So in this, he proposes the argument that there is an asymmetry between good and the bad things. So presence of pain is bad, presence of pleasure is good, absence of pain is good even if that good is not enjoyed by anyone and absence of pleasure is not bad unless there is somebody for whom this absence is a deprivation. In order to explain antinatalism better, let me give you an example. So you are working somewhere, you have a boss and let's say there are two scenarios. In the first scenario, your boss comes up to you in the morning and tells you that you will get an ice cream at the end of this day. Ice cream or chocolate or cake or anything, whatever you want. And there is the scenario two, where your boss has intended to give you something sweet, but he doesn't tell you that. So in scenario one, because you have been promised uh, something pleasurable, denying that pleasure is a bad thing. You become sad because of the absence of that pleasurable thing. But in scenario two, even if your boss fails to give you a chocolate or something sweet, because you have not been informed of this thing coming to you, it, it doesn't affect you in any way. So let's take this scenario into antinatalism. If somebody created you, if you have been born, then there is the question of absence of pleasure or denial of pleasure. But if you never have been born, there is no question of pleasure because nobody told you that you, have, that you will come here to enjoy pleasure or to not have pain. Then David Benetter says that we all have a moral obligation to not cause pain to other people, which I agree to. But because you cannot uh, ensure and guarantee that the newborn cannot be kept happy or without pain all the time, it means that you are doing an immoral thing by creating them. So you might be able to give them a lot of happiness, but that doesn't matter because absence of pain is always better than presence of pleasure. So as long as there is suffering in life, and as long as pain is part of life, you cannot bring a child into this world. Now, another very prominent argument made here is that uh, nobody consented to being born. So you are planning to bring a child into this world but the child did not consent. You did not ask for the child's consent and we have no idea if this child wanted to be here or not. So it is completely on you that this new human being is born. So you are uh, deliberately bringing a child without its consent into this world when you know that this world is full of suffering. So that makes it quite immoral and you shouldn't do it. So I have used a screenshot from Wikipedia yet again and people always accuse me of using uh, material from Wikipedia and to those people I want to say that it is very easy and ad free to get this information from Wikipedia. You can get the same information anywhere in any other form, uh, online, offline or auditory, but collecting this information in this concise and precise form without having to cut here and there because of all these ads, it's easier to take this information from Wikipedia. And also, I only take either quotes or hard facts or uh, book citations, citations from books or inscriptions uh, from Wikipedia and if you have a problem with that, please make sure to share how, uh, how this information that I'm providing is wrong, if not. And I would take this moment to thank Wikipedia for gathering, collecting 
uh, consolidating all of this information in, in such a convenient way. Okay, moving on. So, as I said before, uh, how much pleasure and happiness and uh, skills that you give your child is not important as long as your child goes through pain. And pain and discomfort in Benetton's eyes uh, span as far as sweating, sneezing, uh, crying and even the uh, struggle that the child went through to take its first breath. So as long as the child is crying and actually struggling for the few seconds to take its first breath means that you are immoral to inflict that harm upon it without its consent. This is a very pessimistic ideology where he also says that life in presence of suffering is more or less largely a negative thing. So if you are born, please live your life as you please, but don't inflict the same harm on another person, especially if they did not consent to begin with. So wouldn't that mean that humans will be extinct in uh, a few decades? Well, that's probably a good thing given all the harm of existence. Now I know that there are the so-called natalist, including me, roll their eyes at this ideology and says what nonsense. And to those people, I challenge you to find me a logical explanation to how it is not immoral to bring a child into this world when you know that it will go through suffering. How is it moral to subject a newborn into an imperfect existence in an imperfect world? I mean it. Please tell me in the comments. I am looking for a solid argument myself. I really do believe that antinatalism became so significant and reasonable as an argument only after the 1950s and 60s when we had availability to contraceptives. 1950s and 60s were also a time when overpopulation was seen as a cause for bad things that were happening to humanity. Now, uh, given the population explosion, let alone in this country, what can the government, what ought the government to do about this? So the very first thing the government should do is try and take the pressure off to reproduce. There's a lot of pressure in our society now to reproduce. If you're single, people try and push you into getting married. Young couples, if they don't have children, people say, gee, they must be sterile. They never say, gee, maybe they like uh, good wine and going to the theater and so on. They prefer that to scraping diapers. So there's pressure to have children. So the first thing that should happen is that the president ought to say, from now, here on out, no intelligent, patriotic American family uh, ought to have more than two children, preferably one, if you're starting a family now. Not, not any law, but just say this is what responsible people do. Large families are always treated in a negative light on television, wherever they appear. There ought to be a tremendous amount of television time devoted to spot commercials, the sort we thought against smoking. Uh, but ones in the middle, say in the middle of Beverly Hillbillies, you get a scene which shows Los Angeles in the smog, and it just says this city has a fatal disease. It's called overpopulation. And if that doesn't work, uh, then you'll have the government legislating the size of the family. Uh, and there's not the slightest question that if we don't get the population under control with voluntary means, that in the not too distant future, the government will simply tell you how many children you can have and throw you in jail if you have too many. So from that, we went to the climate change argument and then the women empowered argument. If uh, we have children, it is bad for the environment and it is bad for women. So for the sake of uh, saving environment and empowering women, reduce the number of children you have. And along the same time, antinatalism was also born. And this is affecting the modern generations, especially the millennials and people and the generations after that. Antinatalism disagree that having children is a positive thing it brings us a lot of joy as it should it also agrees that children can be happy if raised uh, properly and empathetically but just because they can be hurt at some point most of them inevitable that that should be stopped it has a logical sense to it and even though it's trying to look like it's protecting the interests of children it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help 
uh, the potential parents who want to raise their children in a in the best way possible because they they are being demoralized from fulfilling that dream that they have just because of the inevitable pain in our lives does antinatalism help children not to be in pain of course not now most people become depressed lonely angry and dependent because of emotional dysregulation in their lives and antinatalism feels like the emotional dysregulation of philosophies <laughs> It's that philosophy that cannot regulate or manage its negative emotions. So it's just going about destroying everything. If you can't help but be sad or depressed or in pain, sometimes we shouldn't exist. But I can also be happy. Doesn't matter. We can't let you suffer. Non-existent beings have non-existent emotions and feelings. No one is feeling bad about an unborn child. No one is feeling immoral about an unmoral unborn child. As in that. Uh, the problem is if you are curtailing population from having children because you think that it's immoral you are making people mourn unborn children because we have a deep base instinct to reproduce and that makes us incredibly happy if antinatalism uh, spreads it will actually cause suffering because of unborn children along the same lines antinatalism is causing unwanted suffering to those who are actually alive by prohibiting them from having children prohibiting how well there are people who really know that it would make them incredibly happy and fulfilled if they had children but just because of this immorality principle and just because of this ideology they are abstaining from it just because they uh, agree with this ideology that it's either immoral to have children or it or that it is bad for the environment to have children they are literally stopping themselves from having children which causes them incredible suffering in more than one ways so young people if exposed to this thought process they cannot get out of it due to guilt self doubt or fear and they choose not to have kids which considerably reduce their happiness and fulfillment in life yes it's hard to parent it's hard to successfully raise children so that they contribute positively to the society i do agree but instead of a philosophy or an ideology or a group offering support help and guidance in this they just simply say ha 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 suckers you will fail your children will suffer so never think of removing that content it's much better to abort that thing before it comes out of your uterus and ruin your life by crying constantly here is an alternative thought there are innumerable ways a human being can suffer and feel pain in their lives but by controlling one's senses and the mind by withdrawing our attention from pain and pleasure one can cultivate courage temperance and wisdom which leads to self fulfillment and sustained happiness in life this concept is called self mastery and when it comes to self mastery pain or pleasure doesn't matter what matters is how much you can control yourself how much you as a human being has mastered your life and your self development this is what stoicism says this is what the yogic philosophy says this is what buddhism says for buddhists pain and pleasure are just uh, two sides of the same coin whenever there is pain there will be pleasure whenever there is pleasure there will be pain and for the yogic philosophies and indian philosophies it's the same so because pain and pleasure are intertwined in this way you need to avoid both of them getting attached to them or as antinatalism does being obsessed with uh, the dualities of pain and pleasure there are a lot of pleasurable things that are incredibly toxic and can damage you and other people around you and there are painful things that bring you the best kind of results and the best kind of life that you want so pleasure and pain by themselves doesn't mean anything it's your perception and it's your control over the those things that help you so 
your focus should be on self development and reaching the highest levels of human excellence you can do that by being resilient to pain rather than complaining about it or feeling desolate but then now you will ask but this is not about me this is not about others this is about children especially children who haven't been born the same applies for new lives for your children as well you don't bring children into this world to provide them constant happiness and comfort i mean of course your children should be happy and comfortable i'm not saying that but that's not why you bring them into this world i don't think anyone ever brings life here or anyone causes life life just merely finds a way through you you decide to have children so that they can live a wonderful prosperous life for that you need to teach them how to be resilient to pain and pleasure how to find happiness and peace within themselves not the outside world you need to teach them how to become the best best versions of themselves just as you have become the best version of yourself and they do that through contemplation practice and patience it's amazing when you succeed in life and achieve excellence it's double or triple amazing when you see yourself and your next generation succeed and achieve excellence maybe even on a greater level don't destroy the gifts of human excellence and opportunities to be happy by giving up control over your mind and letting bad emotions take over your intellect I'm sure you have a lot to say about antinatalism from either sides so let me know in the comments below and I hope you like this video and don't forget to subscribe my greatest dream was to become an author and share awesome stories with you guys I've published my first book a novel named life in a zip lock bag it's a story of four kids living in a city with their unique life experiences they are connected by the chaos in their lives which are fueled by drugs abuse and isolation i don't want to give it all away right here you can check it out on amazon or flipkart it's also available for direct buying all these links are given in the description if you are interested please go and check it out and grab your copy right now thank you